Hi everyone, welcome back to Carpe Diem Sailing. If you're new to the channel, my name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's episode I'll be going over raising the mainsail single-handed, the first video in a new series on single-handing. Welcome to episode 40, Raising the Main Single-Handed and General Single-Handed Sailing Concepts. This episode, the first in my new series on single-handing, was supposed to be about leaving the dock single-handed. That was my original intention, and that, that did air um, a few days ago, and it was up for a few days. I've taken it down based on feedback and numerous comments from you, subscribers, viewers, um, expressing certain concerns that that particular video probably wasn't the best as far as instruction goes. And looking back on it, I've watched it a few times and, and I do agree that uh, there were some issues there that probably weren't best for what I was trying to uh, what I was trying to express. So I will keep it, I will revisit it. Um, there were things that I did there that I could have done better. And, uh, and I think we'll just use that as a learning experience going forward, but not as an instructional video. And it really wasn't meant to be an instructional video. It was more meant to be, um, you know, a demonstration. But anyway, uh, thank you for the feedback and the comments. So let's start this uh, series over. And in this one, we're going to talk about raising the mainsail single-handed. So on, uh, on that note, um, let's start again. And what I want to do first off is just talk about some key concepts that generally apply to single handing. So the first, uh, the list of the list of these these items is going to be why single hand um, is it daunting or intimidating? Some people do find it to be that uh, the gear essential to single handing, preparation, and then finally good seamanship. So let's start back at the top. Why single hand? So for me, there's probably two or three reasons for it. One, people do enjoy the added challenge of being able to sail uh, your vessel uh, single-handed and uh, the confidence that comes along with that. Two is the confidence, the, sorry, not confidence, the uh, convenience, the convenience of being able to take your vessel and go sailing anytime you want without having to be burdened by, uh, you know, relying on crew, uh, not finding crew, that sort of thing. And then finally, there's uh, the solitude of being out there, you, your boat, the water, the waves, the wind um, by yourself, which is which is quite pleasant um, as well. So those are sort of my main thoughts about why people single hand or sail single handedly. Next, um, we're going to talk about uh, is it intimidating or are you daunted by the prospect? And this is based on my thoughts on this are based on comments that I've seen from you know online as well as people who have talked to me about uh, single handing and they've never done it. Um, so a lot of people are intimidated by it. So first of all, yes, the risk is elevated anytime you do any sort of outdoor sport um, by yourself. There is an elevated risk, but there are ways of mitigating that risk. Um, and then following the advice that I have for you here today, um, hopefully you'll find that it's not that difficult at all. Um, for me, I've been single handing for 20 or 30 years. I, when I started keelboat sailing, I couldn't find crew. I had a little 25 foot boat and I would just go out single handing and I kind of learned you know, that, that way. And now, you know, if I'm single handing or if I have crew, it doesn't really feel all that different to me. Um, and we'll talk about how to get there. So I don't think, like I said, I don't think it's difficult, difficult at all. So now let's talk about gear because gear definitely does go a long way to help. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is safety. So when it comes to safety, the first thing you need, I, that I would say is never leave, you know, the dock without a good, solid, certified offshore uh, inflatable PFD. So one with a proper built-in harness that will be attached to a proper tether and that tether will be a pro attached to a proper dedicated jack line. And also many of these now come with crotch straps which is also an added benefit. So definitely having a, a, a good proper C, a PFD with harness um, is the first thing. Now talking about harnesses and tethers uh, and jack lines, I do have an episode coming up uh, that I'll be talking about jack lines um, and harnesses and tethers and that sort of thing. You will see in the video today, um, I had my wife filming, so I wasn't on deck by myself. I did have my PFD on. I was not 
actually tethered and the jack lines weren't up. It was a very quiet day. Um, and just for the sake of clarity and ease of filming, I wasn't, um, I wasn't clipped in. But best practice, is always clip in, especially if you are up, you know, by yourself on deck or, or single handing. Um, and as well at night, right? That's another one. But here today we're talking about single handing. So anytime you're out on the boat by yourself, you should always be clipped in. So the next thing we're talking about, which kind of goes hand in hand with the PFD is a PLB. Um, which is a personal locator beacon. Um, and there's also personal AIS, but for single handing, I believe the PLB would be a better option. Look into them, decide. Some people have both. Um, for me, single handing, a PLB is a good option. I think in a crude boat with AIS, then the AIS, um, the personal AIS does make some sense. So look into it and decide, you know, what's best for you and your budget. An autopilot and or wind vane. So autopilots, electronic autopilots are very, very common these days. Um, and they go a very long way to making life easier while single handing. Um, you'll see in some of my videos coming up, my autopilot uh, did give up the ghost. I need to replace it. Um, so if your autopilot craps out, well, that's just one of the challenges of having to deal with, you know, sailing single handed. And, uh, and it's, you know, there are ways of dealing with it. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Self-tailing winches. Uh, my first little boat that I mentioned earlier, my 25-footer, um, it had no self-tailing winches. I had no autopilot. Um, it had uh, hanked on sails. It was really difficult to single hand um, in, in the end compared to, you know, 35, 40, 45-foot boats with, um, with proper modern gear. So self-tailing winches go a very long way to helping um, self, uh, single hand, sail single-handedly. Um, Lines led aft. This is a really interesting one for me. On this boat, I have all my lines led aft. So my halyards, my reefing lines, my boom vang um, are all led into the cockpit. I do have my topping lift up forward. So that does mean I have to make an extra trip to go and deal with the topping lift. I do plan to lead it aft into the cockpit and then all my lines will be aft. Now, something that I've seen quite a bit on um, boats that have sort of been modified is um, those reefing hooks um, at the gooseneck, but then the halyards uh, led aft. So now you're trying to, you can't really be in two places at once. You can't be dealing with your halyards and, you know, easing the halyard and then hooking on that, that reefing hook. So, you know, either have them all at the mast or all in the cockpit, the cockpit being safer, but very traditional, many traditional boats do have everything up at the mast. So just keep them all in one place so you can get to them, mostly for reefing. But just think about, you know, where your lines are led and how they're led and how you'll be able to use them if you're out there by yourself. And finally, roller furling. So roller furling um, head sails have been around forever. Roller furling main sails are relatively new. Um, I'm, a f I'm, I'm a fan of roller furling head sails. I have three of them. I can actually drop them and change them. And then I just use the roller furler to put them away. And if need be in a pinch, I can roller furl the sail, um, you know, a Genoa to, to the size of a jib. Um, and that's quite doable. I've never had a problem myself with roller furling um, head sails. I mean, there's a few issues here and there, but generally they're kind of maintenance related. Roller furling main sails, on the other hand, I'm not a big fan of for a variety of reasons. Um, I don't like the shape of the sail, uh, especially for going upwind. Um, I have had numerous problems with them jamming. And if they do jam, they're jammed inside your mast. You're kind of hooped. You can't do much about it. So many people love their roller furling mainsails. Um, I personally, it's just not for me. So it's up to you roller furling, whether you like it um, or even a roller furling head sail. If you just want to stick to hanked on sails, it is simple. It's a lot less to go wrong. Uh, that's a choice uh, that, you know, I will leave for you to make. The next thing we're going to get on to is preparation. So when it comes to single handing, one of the issues is you have to do all the jobs. So the idea then is to think about the jobs that need to be done in a, in a certain task and then prioritize them and have everything laid out and ready so that you can smoothly move from one step to the next. So for instance, uh, we talk about coming about. So if I have an autopilot, I'll make sure my autopilot is steering properly and I'm close hauled. I'll make sure that my, uh, my loaded uh, winch is ready to, to be cast off. Um, so my leeward winch will be ready to cast off. My windward winch, I'll be ready to wrap up. Um, I make sure that, you know, it's clear before I turn. So I just make sure all those steps are in place so that, um, you know, when I turn the wheel or, you know, hit the autopilot to, to, uh, to tack, all I have to do is cast off the one sheet and then jump over to the other side or step over to the other side and, um, and then just 
gap that one on there and then off I go. So just think of all the steps that need to be done in order and have them all, all ready to go. Think ahead to be ahead. Moving about the boat. So I'm going to talk a little bit. This is not really about preparation, but I'm talking about, I said jump, jump across. So we never jump and we never rush. So never rush. Don't flail around the boat. Even in an emergency, take your time, move carefully, watch where you're putting your feet, one hand for you, one for the boat, you know, two, three points of contact, go from handhold to handhold, always moving very slowly and deliberately, um, even if you're clipped in. Because being clipped in doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay on the boat. You can have a three foot tether or six foot tether, but depending on where your jack line is, and I've, I've experimented with different ways and it's really, you know, you can't guarantee that you're going to stay on the boat. You'll stay with the boat, but you may be in the water. So still, even though you're clipped in, move around just carefully and smoothly and deliberately. The last thing I'm going to talk about is seamanship. And when it comes to seamanship, there's really two things I want to talk about. So one, depending on where you're sailing, um, is maintaining a proper lookout. So by law, you are uh, required to maintain a lookout by sight and hearing and other available means, I think it says in the coal regs. So you do, uh, you do need to be maintaining a lookout at all times. So just being a sing, you know, being out sailing single-handed doesn't absolve you from keeping a proper lookout. Granted, there are many people who are sing, sing, or sailing single-handed around the world, racers, Vendee Globe, you know, and the rest, who do have to sleep at some point and they have alarms and radar and things like that. But reality is you must maintain a proper lookout. So, you know, on a short day sail, not such a big deal. But on the longer overnight passages, that sort of thing, it can be um, an added challenge. So just keep that in mind that by law, you are required to maintain a proper lookout. And then the other thing I want to talk about is a lee shore. So when it comes to these general seamanship principles, I think when you're sailing single-handed, it's even more important to take them or important to take them more seriously than you otherwise would. So a lee shore is definitely one example. Um, if anything does go wrong when you're sailing single-handed, you are going to need more time to get it sorted out. So just stay away from lee shores. Give yourself lots of sea room to sort out any problems that might arise. As well, have other things ready, like an anchor that's ready to go. So if you do get blown onto a lee shore, you can anchor and buy yourself some time. So definitely, you know, think of those seamanship practices um, and take them very seriously when you're out sailing single-handed, um, and especially a lee shore. Stay well away from Lee Shores. So now with that, let's move on to the meat of this video and let's talk about raising the main single-handed. So we're ready to raise the main single-handed. The autopilot is on, steering the boat straight into the wind. My lines here, as I've mentioned in my other videos and everything I talk about with single-handing, it's all about the preparation. So I've sort of thought ahead my lines, my main sheet, my main halyard, my boom vang, as well as my reefing lines are all eased and flaked here so that the sail is, uh, will go up quite, quite easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward removing the sail ties. Now, the one thing that's different here is my topping lift is up forward, which means I'm going to have to go up for a second trip to ease my topping lift once the main sail is all the way up. That will depend on your boat and how the boat is rigged as far as how many lines are let aft, how many are at the mast. But the general principles remain the same. So, always thinking safety, even though we have a dodger up here, we always close the main hatch and we make sure that the main sheet is hardened as I go forward. I'm going to go forward and I'm going to remove the sail ties as I go on. And once again, remember, one hand for you, one for the boat. I move carefully, I don't rush, I take my time, I have a nice wide stance. My sail ties are all tied on so that I can remove them with one hand. You'll notice again, like I talked about in my other videos, that this main halyard is actually tied down with this last sail tie, which keeps the head down and it keeps the sail secure. At this point, I can take that one off. Now I'm going to return to the cockpit. I'm going to stow my sail ties a bit later. At this point, I'm going to take my main sheet off the winch and I'm going to ease the main sheet. The main sheet and boom bang and the reefing lines in this case all pull down. So we don't want anything pulling down on the sail as it's going up. I make sure the boat is still pointing head to wind. I wrap my winch with my halyard. Clutch is closed in this case. One wrap around 
I step back so I can actually see the sail going up. I make sure my halyard has a fair lead all the way to the top, and I raise the sail. I can get it most of the way up by hand. And you notice my hand position, notice I only have one wrap. So something is jamming. I'm going to have to go and figure that out. So I'm going to harden my main sheet. I have eased all my reefing lines, but something is jamming. So that's why it's important to keep an eye on the lines. So this reefing line is actually caught around my spinnaker halyard cleat. So really important to watch the sail going up. That was actually a really cool example of why we watch the sail. I'm going to ease the main sheet once again. And we're going to carry on. So I know that I can get the sail most of the way up by hand. And if it jams like that, I need to go up and figure out what the problem is. At this point, I add wraps on my winch. And now I'm going to carry on and finish up raising the sail as well as setting my luff tension. The wind is not that heavy right now, so we don't need a lot of luff tension, but I do want to get the little wrinkles out of the luff. As soon as that's done, I choose to bear away one way or the other. As I bear away, the sail will fill with wind. And then we can slow down and continue sailing under main sail alone. I'm going to take my halyard off the winch. I'm going to put my main sheet back on. I'm going to harden the sheet because I do need to go forward to deal with that topping lift. And this winch handle is just a bit long for this Dodger frame. So I'm going to go up on the windward side of the boat. And I'm going to ease my topping lift. I have my topping lift pre-measured, so I put it back on. And my autopilot actually is not, uh, not working right now, not very well, it just stopped working. So I'm just gonna go with the wheel lock instead. So I'm just gonna bear away again, point the boat generally in the direction I wanna go. And then we're going to tidy up all the lines. Now, where we want to go, we're in Discovery Passage right now, just north of us, or ahead of us, I should say, is uh, Seymour Narrows. We're actually going the other way. We're going to be going south, around the south end of Quadra Island. So topping lift is eased, and I'm going to tidy up all my lines. Personally, I like to flake them. I don't coil them up. If I need to drop the sail in a hurry, or if I need to reef, or that sort of thing, I want to have my halyard, my reefing lines all ready to go but you definitely want the lines out from underfoot. Winch handle back in the pocket. The main sheet is actually a working line. It can stay there. And then the boom bang and my reefing lines for my second reef are on this side. They're looked after. And then the last thing I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna take my sail ties and I'm going to stow them. This is the way I like to keep my sail ties. We double them over. And then I put the two tails through the loop on the binnacle here. And that's where they stay. If they're not on the sail or temporarily, you know, on the cushions, this is where they are. So we can get them, get them if we need them. So at this point now, the next thing I'm going to do is continue to bear away, probably to a broad reach in this case, and uh, unfurl our Genoa. New episodes go up every second Wednesday at 6 p.m. See you next time when we review a revolutionary piece of marine safety gear 
the sea arch. Thanks for watching. Until then, I wish you all fair winds and following seas.